Hello everyone and welcome back to This Is Real Life. I'm your host Sherry and we are out in the garage and it's late, I'm not gonna lie, because for this DIY Wednesday, I had so much inspiration coming in and out of my head. I didn't know what to do. I know what I kinda wanna do, but when I went to go find some supplies, it was kind of a shit show. Let me show you the inspiration and then we'll go from there. So first I was inspired by this thing. It's like an easel and it was for fall or Thanksgiving. It's $30. It seemed okay, but I wanted to do a take on it cause I really wasn't happy with like the image on it and then it wasn't changeable. Then I saw almost same sort of situation from the big lots. But what I liked about this was it's two-sided. So one side is for fall and the other side is for Christmas. What I liked about this idea, the easel actually has like a little well where you can slide in and out your sign. Now, this is $32 at the Big Lots. So I was like, well, shit, we can make that. We can make that for way cheap because all of my actual wood supplies here, free. It's from the wood pile over there. Where I ran into a problem was finding cute sayings, things to like glue on top of the board so that one side was fall and the other side was Christmas. That's why I'm like, what do I do? I love that idea, but realistically, if I had a hard time finding cutouts and shapes and whatever, you're gonna have a hard time and that's no fun. I want you to be able to recreate this DIY. Let me show you what happened. So I was literally supposed to get started on this DIY mm, approximately two and a half hours ago. Then I saw number two inspiration from the big blocks and I was like, oh, easy. I'm gonna run over to the Dollar Tree, pick up some signs, some bags, some whatever, rip them apart, glue them on. Well, apparently everybody on the planet has skipped over fall. Fall doesn't exist, Thanksgiving doesn't exist because there was nothing. Nothing at the Dollar Tree, nothing at the Target, nothing at the Joann's, nothing at the Tuesday morning, nothing at the other Dollar Tree. What I found for the fall side, which I'm not even really that happy with, a turkey, and two pumpkins. Now these are out of lightweight cardboard. It's one of those like kind of cheesy honeycomb center pieces. I would take it apart and just use the pumpkin portion of it on the sign, which might still be cute. I don't know. I don't know if I'm a huge fan of it. There's a ton of shit for Christmas. And I found these, I did end up buying all this at the Dollar Tree. So if we don't do this idea, I wasted $6, not a big deal. But I found these super cute, lightweight wooden Christmas trees. I thought, ooh, this would be cute for the Christmas side, doing like a little situation like this. But then it was like, I don't wanna hand paint words. Ain't nobody got time for that. And I don't necessarily think I have the best handwriting on the planet. And then I was like, oh, well I know three girls that have cricket machines. They could cricket me out words and that would be super cute. But then I was like, not everybody has three girlfriends that have crickets and I don't have a cricket. Maybe you don't have a cricket. So I was thinking, oh, just paint it on. And I actually went to the Joann's to buy a bunch of those 99 cent paints in different colors. And then I thought, no. And then I thought, okay, well, why don't I print out wording, cut it out, and then like decoupage it on. Ain't nobody got time to cut out words either. So here's where I am. I just pulled in. I have my supplies laying out because I had gotten my supplies laid out before I even took off. Because my original idea, which I'm almost considering going back to, is more of a tabletop countertop, sort of an easel that is actually a chalkboard so that you could use it year round, write whatever you wanted on it in chalk. You could write a menu. If you're hosting Thanksgiving, you could literally write an inspiring message on it. Keep it out all year round. You could pull it out just for the holidays. It would fold up and slide, you know, wherever for storage if you only wanted to use it at Christmas or whatever. And I really did dig the two-sidedness of it. So I'm not quite sure if I want to make it large enough to put out by your front door or if I like the countertop idea. Because the countertop idea was what I was gonna do originally and I was all about it until I saw that other thing from the Big Lots with the two-sided. I'm torn. It's one of those ones where I'm torn. Here's the thing. I think the Christmas trees in the little wooden Christmas trees are hella cute. I think my last resort, these 
stupid cardboard pumpkins, not that cute. But once it's on black, it might look actually kind of cute. I don't know. Do I do it so that you can stand it out by your front door? We can make this however big we want. We have the supplies here. I'm gonna use old palette board that I saved from some palettes that I've taken apart in the past. This old backer board that we've used for a million different projects. I don't know. See, when you're like overly inspired, this creates an issue. The two-sidedness of it is what kills me. I think that is a great idea. You could switch it out all year long because all you would need was just a different board. You could even do another board that was more of like a welcome sort of a sign. And then the other sign could even be like a happy birthday if you were having a birthday party. Oh my gosh, one easel and multitudes of different sayings just on the boards. If I had a cricket, and if you had a cricket, I looked, I believe me, I looked at the Joannes because I maybe it's like time to invest in a cricket. You know a cricket, if you don't already have one, it's like $150 or a hundred and some odd dollars. It's over a hundred dollars. Plus, not to mention the sticky paper that you print on, a roll is like $15, $16 for just one color. To me, that is ridiculous. Yeah, I didn't buy a cricket, needless to say. I like the idea of a chalkboard easel. I really do. Because while these are cute, is it worth it? I don't think think so. Okay. Okay. Here's what I'm deciding ish for me and my money and my usage, a easel that is chalkboard that goes on my countertop that I could use for whatever in chalk and erase and do something different again. I would get more use out of something like that. I am not the kind of person that changes my front door decorations with the holidays. My front door is what it is 90% uh, of the year. The only time it ever gets decorated is at Halloween and at Christmas. So to have an easel that is large enough to set by my front door, which I did the calculations and it would need to be approximately 48 inches tall to make sense. It's just really not my jam. And then I thought, okay, well, even though it's not your jam, Sherry, you could totally make it. You know, you could give it away as a Christmas gift, which would be cute because my mother-in-law would totally put something by her front door. So for my money, we're gonna go ahead and create a tabletop one or a countertop one. Now, because we're making this ourselves. You can make it as big as you want. If you want to put it out by your front door, you certainly can make it 48 inches tall. And I'll tell you my measurements for the outdoor one. It was gonna be 48 inches tall, and then the backer board was going to be 24 inches long by 15 inches wide. I did go in and measure like how big I wanted my countertop one to be. I want my inside chalkboard writing room 11 by 17. So. Let's get started on our countertop, because we've decided countertop chalkboard easel on this DIY Wednesday. Aren't you excited? We decided. So if you did want to create a two-sided slide in and outable board, whatever the thickness of your slideable board is, you will want a piece that is that thick. And what you would do is for the easel, you would put your first holder piece down and then you would put this in and then you would put your second holder piece down and that's going to create that channel for you to slide in and out your board. So you would want to do that for your bottom and for your top. So you would create two basically like sandwich pieces. Let's say these were all measured properly. This would mount to here and I'd have another one that was exactly the same and pretend this was my full on board. See how it would just slide right in there and it would totally hold and it would totally be great. So that is a way to achieve if you wanted to do a two-sided situation. But we're only doing a one-sided situation today, so I'm not doing that. Okay. So first on the agenda, everything here is recycled. I'm actually spending no money on this project at all. And the first inspiration I saw at the Big Lots was $30. I mean, literally I wasted $6 at the Dollar Tree, but you know, I can use them for something. Who knows what, you may see them. These may make a comeback, you never know. But those stupid centerpiece things, that was a waste. I wasted $3 at the Dollar Tree. Oh well. Easy come, easy go. So first we are going to start with our backer board. This is going to be our chalkboard, basically. My tape measure is in the car. Hold on. 
Why is my tape measure in the car, you ask? Well, because I took it with me to the Dollar Tree to see if anything that was at the Dollar Tree was the size that I needed and it was not. What we're going to do is because I want my writing area of my chalkboard to be 11 by 17, but I am going to take pallet wood and this is actually three and a half inches wide. So I'm gonna rip this down the center and this is going to be my easel structure. So I wanna add 1.75 to my 11 by 17 measurement all the way around. So basically I'm adding three and a half inches top and bottom to my backer board. So I'm gonna make some marks at 14 and a half. 20 and a half, let's make some marks there. We're gonna make two cuts off of this baby. Now, we just need to cut. Because I want it to be super, super straight, I am actually going to use ugh, my circular saw. Again, you don't have to be scared of the circular saw. We've already gone over this in many DIYs. You're not a dum-dum, just don't put your fingers under your wood and you won't chop your fingers off. It's very, very easy. Line up my line with my little guide here and go. Plug it in and then go and go. And done. Flip it real good. Saw off this end right here. And go. That's done. So we definitely have our chalkboard. So I have some leftover chalk paint. <laughs> I have maybe, maybe, and then I have some paintable. Obviously, I'd like to spray paint it on. I wanna spray paint this whole thing so that this is drying while we're building our easel because you know, we are multitasking. Let's see, okay. All right, this is a bonus. Oh, no, oh, maybe. Maybe we can get a little bit. With chalk paint, you're supposed to go in like even strokes. I never pay attention to that. But so far, so good. Oh, come on, just give me one coat before you die. Oh, 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 Mataweegee. Now, if you were going to do like a um, hand paint, maybe you're a wonderful artist and your hand painting skills are 10 times better than mine. I would just paint this flat black, shiny black, matte black, whatever black. You know what I wanna try? I wanna get those chalkboard pens. Ooh, that's what we're gonna do instead of actual chalk those chalkboard pens. I feel like I got one good coat of this and I'm gonna see if I can get another coat of this on. If not, we'll like sponge roller that on. We'll see. Okay, so I did end up having to use the chalkboard paint out of the can. I used both of whatever was left in both of those spray cans and then I finished with a nice clean coat of what I had left in my actual paint can. So this is our lovely chalkboard and it is just drying its little heart out. So while it's doing that, I'm gonna move it because we're gonna cut our wood for our easel and I don't want this to get any like sawdust on it. And to cut our easel, I'm actually bringing out the table saw. Okay, so for our easel, I'm going to use some recycled pallet wood, which was free to begin with and now is even more free because three and a half inches is way too wide for an easel frame. I'm going to rip it down the middle so that I get a bunch of pieces that are 1.75 inches wide. So I'm going to move my little J thing to 1.75 right there. Yep, all right, out. All right, we're plugged in and we are ready to go. So table saw, not a big deal to use. Most people would put this on an actual table, but I always do it on the ground. You know me. So basically just don't put your hand over that blade and you'll be fine. We're just gonna be able to blast through the ripping of this wood like so fast. Don't blink because it will be over. sure how many of these pieces we're going to use. Two might actually be fine, but I do want to cut this little shorter one just to have just in case. So I'm going to cut that now.
Yay. This should be plenty enough wood to make our frame and our easel. So let's do that. Okay, so I have my easel frame pieces cut out and ready to go. There's a part of me that's toying with what color do I want this to be? Quick and easy, I could slap a coat of stain on this and it would be like a dark, like walnut-y brown, which might be lovely. Another part is like, oh, you also have a can of white paint. You could do a white frame and then the black chalkboard on the inside. Then another part of me is like, you have some crazy colors of spray paint. But if I want to make this more like universal holiday, for my money, stain would be the quickest and easiest. I just thought of something that's gonna make my job a little bit harder, but might be actually cuter. Fred's revving up his car right now. I'm going to slap a coat of stain onto all of these. Then I'm going to sand it. Then I'm gonna slap a coat of white paint on each one of these and then sand that and give it kind of a little bit of a more of a shabby chic sort of a look. More antique, more vintage, more like, I've had this chalkboard easel for generations. It's gonna take me a little bit longer, but not that much longer. Or I might change my mind midway. I might put some stain on it and go, ooh, no, I really like the stain. So we might just leave it, so we might just leave it stained. Let's start with stain first. I'm gonna leave it kind of raw and gross and then I'll sand it after I stain it. I know that seems weird, but I don't want the rusticness of the board to go away. The only part I would be sanding would be the sharp edges. So I'm just gonna run a sander over it real quick on the sharp edges. Let me get some stain out. Okay, I have my stain, which is fairly new and I have my crusty ass stain towel. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rub it on, rub it off. Rub it on, rub it off. See, that's a pretty color, really. See, this is when you're making your own shit. You could get carried away or you could play around and say, oh no, my plan that I had originally, I like this better. So I'm gonna stain all these and then we'll see what we think. Okay, I have all of my pieces stained. I'm way more pieces than I actually need stained. I'm thinking the dark up against the black looks pretty nice. So I'm gonna leave it, but you could do whatever you want. If you had like a red kitchen or an orange kitchen or a blue kitchen or a purple kitchen or whatever, you could paint your frame any color you want. It's up to you. It's your DIY. It's your chalkboard easel. So what I think is I'm going to build the frame. So what I wanna do is I wanna create my two sides and I wanna leave a little extra, I don't know, three inches or so of a leg, but I want the top butted up with the top and then I'm gonna leave a little bit of a leg here, 24. That's what I'm gonna go with. Oh my gosh, wouldn't it be great if I could just cut one directly in half? What's 24 and 24, 48. <gasps> it's 47. Okay, why don't we just cut one of these in half? I mean, we can make up our own measurements. It's our thing. 23 and a half. Let's cut it there. And then that way we could just use one. And I like this one the best. So 23 and a half it is. So I've flipped my stained board over and I'm gonna just measure out 23 and a half. And I'm gonna still use my circular saw cause it's out and make quick work of this. Saw this puppet. Yay, okay. I decided I'm not even gonna sand these cause I dig it. I'm gonna hit this with stain. Just rub that right on in. Come on stain, get in there. The lovely thing about stain is it dries so darn fast. Yay, now what we're gonna do is mount our side pieces onto our chalkboard. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna put some wood glue down first, then I'm gonna flip it over and put a couple screws in from the back side down. Dollar Tree wood glue, still using it. Liner on up, same thing here, flipper, wood gluer, and then we're gonna flip this whole situation over and put some screws in for some extra stability. I got some screws here, maybe just like three on each side, who knows. Handy dandy screw gun or drill with a screw bit attachment, however you like to call it, it's fine. So I'm gonna do one top, one bottom, one mid, and I'm not pre-drilling. Perfect. Same thing, other side. Perfection. Now, all we have to do 
is measure this part and this part for our interior frame and then make our kickstand and we'll be done. From inside of this leg and inside of this leg, that's 11, we should have known that. We know that our inside measurement is going to be 11 by 17. So this just needs to be 11, perfect. It's longer than we need it. So yay, let's cut it. And we'll fit it before we cut the other one. 11, and let's saw that. Ready to set, go. Okay, why is this so cute already? Oh, I like it better at the top. I need to rub some stain right here. Okay, I like that. That one's gonna go there. I like it. Let's do our other one for our bottom. Use this one as a template for this one. I'd like to use this edge, but it's kind of jacked. So I'm gonna have to start from this edge. So basically the exact same thing we did for our sides, we're gonna do for our top and bottom. Oh, look at that snug fit. Good work, Sherry. Let's get some wood glue. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I love every minute of that. Gosh, this looks cute. Let's get our other piece. Put in a bead of wood glue, smash that all in. And now let's gently turn it over and screw in from the back side. One. Good. All right, now let's do the bottom. Yay. Our frame is completely on our chalkboard and it looks amazing. I really quickly went and hit stain around all edges as well as the back side so everything is uniform. Now all we need to do is flip it over and make our kickstand so that it actually stands up. Again, all of this to me is free because I had all this shit. Ideally, would I be using a hinge that was like this? No, but it's what I had and I have one of them. I'm gonna flip this over. You know, we're just gonna eyeball it. So what's gonna happen is I'm going to take a piece of our extra board and really very easily, I am just going to create another leg, hinge that on. I also have an eye hook that I'm gonna put on the back of here and the back of here so that our kickstand doesn't flop completely open and that we have this tied with the string so it catches it. Very similar to what I did on our snowman last Christmas. Very easy. I am going to need to place a piece of wood on the back here in order to mount my hinge. Cut a little wedge board here, put it to here, hinge this to here, Hinge this to here, voila, just like that. No fuss, no muss. Okay, so I have my pieces cut and stained and now we just need to mount them. So I want to have this be as much in the center as possible. So the center of this piece lined up with seven and a quarter because that's where our hinge is gonna go. I wanna figure out how far my legs, they're about three inches. So I want three inches of this hanging off. Okay. We're kind of eyeballing. Whereas my front legs are three inches from the bottom, I'm gonna make my kickstand be three and a half because when we open her up, then they'll be like even, but it'll still be able to lean back. Make sense? Okay, so I'm gonna go bottom there, top there. And then I'll measure the center and we'll line this up, center, center. Look at me not eyeballing, aren't you proud? It's all coming together. Some wood glue, just a little dab will do me between there and there and the center of it there. And the only reason why I am putting this board here is because any screw I had, if I just put this hinge directly on the back, they would go right through my chalkboard. And I don't wanna risk that. So I'm putting this as a like a stable situation so that I could continue to use the screws I've been using to screw the hinge to the board. See, didn't poke through my chalkboard. I was nervous, I double checked. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want this little part right here, right in line with the top. Perfect. Perfect. Yay, there's our hinge. So this is going to line up here. Let's just make sure. Let me close it. Oh yeah, perfect shown. Get two more screws and screw that in. Oh my gosh, this is, I know it looks like it's pitch black dark out, but it's actually still quite early. We haven't been out in the garage that long and we're getting a masterpiece right now. Perfect. Oh no, not perfect. I screwed into my board. Uh-oh, I need shorter screws for this side. Oh no, do I have some? Let's hope so. God dang it. Actually, I do know that I do have shorter. Hold on. Where did I see? Oh, right here. Let's do this again. Perfect. 
Thank goodness I have these ones. I'd have been pissed. <laughs> Yay, okay. Kickstand on. Look at the magic. Oh. Clearly we don't want it to flop open. I do have these little, they're kind of like a cup hook, but they are full circle. Don't know why I bought them and why I didn't use them because the package is still brand new. But we're gonna do one on this side of our kickstand, probably mid and then one here. And then we're gonna twine that together so that boom, it gets stuck. You know what I mean? Maybe at five inches up from the bottom, boom. I'm gonna center it as best as possible. Oh, that's seven and a half, dum dum. Eight and a half here, the bigger dot. All right, now all we have to do is screw those in. I might need a pre-drill. There, aha, uh -huh. there it is. And why I got this is so I can actually get some torque and go like this, you see? So smart. Don't go all the way or you'll poke through your chalkboard. Now, same deal over here. And now spin her around. Good. Yay! Now see? Boom. Now when we have our little string, boom, it won't open any more than we want it to. Look at that. Ah. So the next time you see it, it will be in the house for the final reveal. Okay, are you guys ready for the masterpiece that is our easel chalkboard situation? Because here it comes. Dun, 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 dun. Look at how amazing. And I think it's perfect for the countertop, to be quite honest. I just decorated it with a little, you know, fall leaf garland, put a little pumpkin by it. Really, you could switch this out for any time of year. Faux show. Sure. And see, look right here. We have our little string going from our little eye hook to our little eye hook. So this sucker is not going anywhere. Look at that, totally stable. So seriously, I know we made a chalkboard esque sort of situation in the past out of that vintage grape tray. But this is something that you don't have to keep up all year long. You can if you want to. You can make it be your own measurements. And let me just remind you how much it costs. Do you guys remember? Because it cost us zero dollars. Scrap wood, old chalk paint, an old hinge, and some twine, and some old eye hooks. Mm-hmm, zero dollars. And you know what I'm thinking? I actually really think it's pretty cool. I dig it on my counter. I think it would be totally cute to do like, if you were having Thanksgiving dinner at your house, let's say you write like, menu, turkey, mashed potatoes, pumpkin pie, whatever. So people know what you're serving. Um, you could keep this out all year round and just write cute, fun messages on it. I think that the size that we came up with for my countertops in particular, pretty perfect. I like that I can just put it flat, stick it in a closet if I don't want it out. And what I really like about it is that it was free. Yeah. I mean, seriously, the more I'm looking at it, the more I'm like, hmm. I could totally give this as a Christmas gift. Make a bunch of these up. If you have some scrap, extra, extra scrap wood lying around, a can of chalk paint, you could knock out one for every single family member for Christmas for free-ish, minus a hinge and some chalk paint. I love that. I don't know, I could just keep, I could just keep gushing and gushing about it because we were toying about what paint or what to do with the frame portion. And I really like the dark stain against the black. I think that's pretty nice, but any color would do if you ask me. Just whatever goes with your decor, I think would be wonderful. And again, we made it for free. So there you have it and there it is. Another perfect DIY again. Cause why? Cause we're perfect and everything we do is money. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, minus that uh, ornament, Halloween wreath, let's not pretend. That one wasn't that perfect. Everything else is, really. Go back in time, everything's perfect. Minus that wreath. We'll never mention that wreath ever again. Okay, perfect, thanks. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you ring that notification bell so that you are alerted to all of the DIY Wednesday videos I push out, which is every other Wednesday at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. Be sure to share this video with your family and friends. And as always, thanks for hanging out.